Hello and welcome to the next episode of Frog Manual, this time the episode 12. In episode 12 we will learn how to build an HPA high kappa. Mmm, oh so nice, so nice. Of course that one was already built, we won't be building that one, we'll be building another one. But first let's see how does the conversion set for a high kappa looks like. So as usual you have some mags and a speed loader. In the case of pistols it's 3 mags, nice, mm, oh yeah, and these mags are 17 round capacity single stack as always, a little bigger than P226 mags, fully 3D printable, I already published a manual on how to build those, so the magazines, and the usual speed loader, color depends on the version, yeah, it was published long time ago. We also have a piece of paracord, and the hose assembly which is pre-built and the conversion itself. The conversion has two screws on the rear and a plastic part on the top. You can see how it looks like, it's smaller than the P226 conversion but basically it's the same, kind of simple, no additional mechanisms. The way we will be building the high kappa is basically we will mount this into the frame similarly to P226 but in this case it will be much simpler. So. Let's start. And as usual, in order to build a gun, you need a gun. This is an old and stupid joke, so let's add some stupid noises. So in this episode I'll be building... This nice gun. Let's see what it is. I think this is actually some kind of John Wick movie style. So right now it's more like John Week, W E A K, and you want to be John Wick, W I C K, and for being W I C K, you need the HPA. So the assembly will be divided into few steps. First, we will prepare the conversion with use of the parts from the magazine. Then we will disassemble the pistol to mount the conversion to the frame and actually this will be all. So you maybe have watched the P226 where depending on the manufacturer the assembly could be a tiny bit tricky because there was some modification needed in different degree to the slide assembly or the hammer and in the case of high kappa it's not needed at all. So it's much simpler, we just mount the conversion and it should be fine. See somebody used too much grease here. Let's dive into the assembly and the first step will be conversion preparation with the parts from the magazine. We will be taking out the valve and the top seal from the magazine as always and as always we need to make sure that the magazine is empty. So you can shoot the gas out or just press the valve with something but don't do it with your hand because if you will release a big amount of gas you might burn yourself. Remember, face this side away from yourself. So my magazine is already empty, I can press the valve and nothing happens. So let's take our conversion and let's remove the valve. You need to use this kind of tool, although if you insert a wide enough uh, flat screwdriver it would work also, but I prefer to do it with the tool. So the valve is out and you must make sure that all the seals came out. So. There should be three of them, one here, one here and one on this movable tip, yeah? So you need all of those. So let's put the valve to the side, make sure that it's clean, no debris are on the seals and so on. And then we need to punch out the spin here. Okay, remove it carefully so that the top doesn't fly under spring tension and we can remove the top part. Here we want to take out the seal from the inside and we will be using the pin and the seal so let's put them here. The rest of the magazine uh, this is something you don't need so you can do with it whatever you like. I'll just put it aside. By the way these seals if they were flat with the top of the magazine they are not the best quality let's say. Uh, they should be elevated like a millimeter or something the best so if uh, you'd like you can actually replace it with some better um, aftermarket one but I will use uh, what comes uh, in the set. 
Okay, so if we have our valve and it's already clean, then we need to mount it into the conversion. You can notice that there is this threaded tip here and sometimes, uh, depending on the size, because these valves come from very many manufacturers, actually it might be useful to file this off because it will limit the uh, movement of the valve, limiting the uh, airflow that goes through it. So in some of the valves it might be worth filing off. How do I know if to file it off or not? I basically need to assemble the conversion. If I see um, that the power is kind of low, I can try uh, filing this off. What I need to do is to basically put the valve here similarly to the regular magazine and now I will rotate it counterclockwise so that the thread is thread sketch and wait when they will catch I will just rotate it clockwise to tighten it down and here use some you know decent amount of force but not too much make sure that it will be sealed and the important thing will be that the tip of the valve, uh, this one that will be knocked by the valve knocker, shall be flash, not visible here. So if in case of your high kappa it would be visible, then probably you need to file it off too. But in case of this particular one, I tightened it. It's actually like, my finger says 0.2 millimeters lower than this wall. So it should be okay. Okay, now we remove this plastic part from here and uh, we will need to put in the seal but it has sharp corners which we need to cut off because the opening in the conversion is milled and the sharp corners are not doable in this particular process. So I'll just take a sharp blade and very quickly cut off these corners. You can see that the seal has this kind of shelf on the side here and here. So basically this is uh, this corner is what I want to remove 35 degrees like a chamfer. So here we go. Okay, so now with these corners removed, you can see how it looks like. I can drop it in here. So it sits. Actually it's elevated above the conversion level like one millimeter, so maybe it will be just fine and then I need to put in the plastic part back and if the seal gets caught, like in my case, just, you know, help it a bit to go through. Okay, so you see it's elevated, it looks nice and I need to secure it with this pin. Uh, so the pin will go here in the hole and depending on the manufacturer, this pin could be tiny bit bigger or smaller. So if it's uh, very hard to push it into the hole, maybe before, you know, doing this with full force and so on, you can just file this hole a bit, yeah? But um, in general, it should go um, in without major problems. Okay, and you see that my pin is in. So this way I have prepared conversion. And one last thing, I can remove these two screws because I will use them for the assembly. I'll take them out now. Okay, and I'll keep these screws aside. Uh, put the conversion aside and now we can go to the next step, so to disassemble our pistol in order to be able to perform the assembly. Bam! Generally, this is not the instruction on how to disassemble the gun and put it back, but unfortunately to some degree I have to show it. So for this reason, I'll explain uh, step by step how to get to a level where you can basically mount the conversion and then put it all the way back into the complete gun. But if you want to see how to disassemble the complete gun, I believe there are tutorials for this, so I don't need to show it. Having said that, let's start. So first we remove the slide, we push it like this so that this cutout is here over the tip of the locking lever. We remove the lever and we remove the slide. And basically the slide will not be needed anymore for any operation before the final reassembly. Okay, so we are left with this part. What we will do is we will remove this pin here. We need to push it out. And not all of the high kappas uh, have this extended mag, well, it could look tiny bit different at your case, but generally we remove this. And by removing this pin, uh, we release those parts that are here at spring tension. So the extended mag, well, if we happen to have one, 
and this assembly with the spring um, usually it should be actually like pressed in I don't know why in this gun it jumped out but whatever so maybe some blocking pin is missing here okay and we are left with this assembly and from this assembly we will remove three screws one here on top the other one on the other side or the third one here in the frame so let's take them out okay when the screws are gone we can take off the pistol grip from the rest of the frame and we can put the pistol grip aside too and right now we need to disassemble this rear part of the frame and we start with removing these arms for the safety basically we lift them up and we pull them apart and this one will come out then we can also pull out this one and be careful here you maybe saw it there is this tiny pin with a spring here that can shoot out and there is one more that in my case stayed in the frame but you don't want to lose it uh, without the safety levers we can take this rear part out and right now we need to remove this screw okay and without this screw you will be able to lift the side up and here there is this tiny pin I spoke about we can take this complete assembly we don't need to disassemble it anymore so you can have a look how these springs and components are uh, aligned in case something falls out but we can just put it aside and we need to remove the hammer and these two parts from here and this is what we will be working on right now we have the frame in our hands we will be doing some attachment points by drilling of course and this will generate debris and you can see that my frame is totally covered in some teflon lube so i need to wipe it off it will be easier later to clean off the debris when this is dry so i will do it off screen and i'll put these all parts aside so that i can drill safely and not damage anything around here so I'll be right back. I have here my frame. Nice, clean, maybe not so clean, but let's say good enough. And I have my conversions. What we need to do right now is we need to find the position for the conversion and then uh, drill two holes. I remind you, I removed the screws already. Then drill two holes in the frame here on this wall. This wall here to basically attach the conversion in position like this. For this, because again, high kappa kind of universal design, many manufacturers, it could be tiny bit different from case to case, so I will not give you exact numbers or dimensions in the style, put one screw this amount of millimeters away and that amount of millimeters away. I will just explain you how to find where to put the screws and you can find for yourself. Maybe the values will be the same or maybe they will be tiny bit different. So. We will need a caliper, here is mine, and uh, first let's think about how we will assemble the conversion. So you can see it goes in like this, it should be in the middle of the magwell, but be careful because the middle of the magwell is not the middle of the frame, frame is thicker on this side, so we cannot relate to this uh, finding the symmetry between these two walls, we need to find it on the inside of the magwell and then uh, of course it's uh, it has to be symmetrical and then on the top the top surface of the conversion here has to be not higher than the top surface of these guides of the con of the frame here so yeah there is one missing because we removed the part but this is the one that we will use as reference again if i put in the conversion uh, you can see that here it should be flush or in a tiny minus tolerance so up to minus 0.3 should be still okay and uh, if you drill it too high or too low then always you can make the um, screw holes tiny bit bigger i will explain it in a minute so it will not be a huge issue so the dimension i will just show it quickly here from the bottom of the conversion to the axis of the holes is three millimeters uh, right now caliper is not set yeah i'm just using it to show what distance I mean. So this is three millimeters. So I need to position the conversion this way and then when it is positioned this way I need to have a look here on the bottom 
in this view you can see that the bottom here on this wall is not the same plane as the bottom of the conversion they are tilted yeah so i need to measure parallel to the bottom of the conversion and i need to measure the distance like this to the edge of the wall here and usually it's like 0.6 millimeters so i measured 0.5 seems okay yeah so it's in my case 0.5 this means that i need to add three millimeters to this so let's do 3.5 because this is the distance from the bottom wall of the conversion to the axis of the holes right three millimeters so i add this additional dimension because of the different orientations which in this case is half millimeter and i can put the uh, caliper like this and i can mark the 3.5 millimeter line here in the rear so you can see i left the line i blocked the caliper with the screw here and uh, right now i have the height for the holes for the screws so now i need to find the position uh, in this uh, perpendicular dimension uh, i already said that conversion has to be in the middle of the magwell here so it has to be symmetrical and the distance between the holes is 5.5 millimeters so basically i need to find the middle of the magwell then mark it on this side so that it crosses that line i already did and then move 2.25 into one side and the other to mark the uh, positions of these uh, screws so uh, first we find we will find the symmetry and here we have to be tiny bit careful uh, because there is draft in the magwell yes so the walls are not parallel to each other so how i will do it i will put the caliper in here i will measure the wall just under this uh, rib here yeah on the top so i will catch this wall and this wall is 2.5 millimeters yeah if i press on it it will be 2.5 and i will measure the width of the magwell which is 17.5 so now i need to divide 17.5 in half and add 2.5 to it and this will give me something like 11.25 and right now if i go here uh, to the wall i should be marking where the middle is so i make a scratch in the middle you can see i have my middle of the magwell marked here so i basically took half of the magwell width and added this wall from which i'm measuring with the caliper to reach this dimension and of course it's good to always check if this makes any sense so if i look here and i measure uh, to the line more or less it's 10.1 and if i measure on this side it should be also 10.1 which it is so uh, it seems that the line is really in the middle now i set my caliper to 2.5 millimeters now 2.75 make the symmetrical marking side i can do it also with the rear it's e if it is here so now you can see i have my three lines and if i measure in between the lines for the screws it should be 5.5 millimeter uh, more or less it will never be perfect but should be more or less which in my case you can see it's actually quite perfect okay so that's it uh, right now we need to take a drill and drill perpendicularly to this wall through the points where we mark the screws should should be so these sides uh, side crossings yeah of the vertical and horizontal lines and the middle can stay there is no screw in the middle yeah it was just for reference and the access could be a little tricky because you can see that you run very close to this wall here so maybe you have to drill the inner um, hole at a little angle but this will not generate any issue yeah you can just drill it it will be fine and the best way to drill uh, these kind of holes is to always use a smaller drill than the target the target will be 2.5 millimeters hole in diameter because the screws that we are going to use to attach the conversion will be 2.5 millimeters so i'll start probably with 1.5 millimeter and i will make sure that these small holes are centered because if i miss tiny bit 
then I can, uh, by switching the size of the drill, I can drill a little more in one of the directions to increase the uh, size of the hole in this particular one. So this is something that I will do uh, off screen. I will drill first these smaller holes, then I will show them and then I will enlarge them and show them again. You can probably see I have these holes in place and actually this one uh, ran out to the side of 0.3 millimeters. So I will need to correct it with the bigger size. This one is okay. This was 1.5 diameter drill so now when I will be drilling this one that is a little move to the side I'll be drilling at an angle uh, for the first and then I will switch to straight when the drill will be um, in the center yeah so I start like this the tip of drill will stand in place I will slowly rotate it until it goes straight through and the part is ready so I have my two holes you can always measure to be sure that the holes are in place and I made first cleanup. One more thing, uh, you need to make sure that there is no debris sticking out after drilling these holes because they might influence the position of your conversion and this goes for the both sides. So obviously on this side you also don't want to have anything like this. Yeah, it's usually good enough to remove it with a knife or some debarring tool. And now we can take the conversion and we can take our two screws that were originally in the back of the conversion here and we can put here the conversion like we want to mount it and basically drop in one screw, then the second one, then tighten them both one after the other, maybe not all the way in one go, just to you know position the threads, the conversion nicely. And let's see how it sits. So you can see in my case it's like perfectly flat. Yeah, there is maybe 0.1 millimeter difference, something like this, and yeah, it fits nice. So this means that most likely 99% I did the job. What I can do to test it, I can also try a magazine if it fits. Yeah, it should go uh, more or less to this height where the arm here or this side of the feeding lips uh, is more or less even with the guides for the slide like in my case, yeah? So if the magazine goes in nicely, it means that conversion is in the middle, everything's fine. We need to do one more thing because right now the heads of the screws are sticking out and there is mechanism sliding just above this wall, uh, so there would not be space for it right now. So we need to make a conical uh, opening at the beginning of the uh, screw holes big enough to hide the heads of the screw, basically. So what we need to do is to just remove those, put the conversion aside for one more moment and the screw head is more or less 4.5 millimeters in diameter so we need to take something like uh, maybe a drill 5 millimeters size or some chamfering tool and we need to basically center on these holes a chamfer big enough that on the tip it has the size of the head of the screw so that the screw uh, head will hide flash with this wall. I will do it off screen and I will show you how it looks like when ready. So here I am, you see I added these big chamfers here, they kind of intersect. I use, uh, I use the 6 mm drill, 4.6 probably would be enough. Of course make sure not to drill through completely, right? But the target is to have it deep enough so that if I put the screw in right now, like this, the screw head uh, is flush with this rear wall, which in my case is. If you are not sure if it's enough or not, you can just try to assemble the gun and if the firing mechanism will not uh, jam or anything, it means that you did it correctly. And if it will jam, then probably it could be catching here on these screws a little. So right now, as I have it uh, ready, I will mount this conversion back in place. So the very same way I did it just a moment ago. And make sure before you do it that all the debris from all this drilling, chamfering and so on are removed. I'll tighten this nicely. You can use some Loctite but maybe after some final assembly you can check again if here on top is flush. And you can again check the magazine. Everything's fine. Everything should be okay. So what is left to do right now is basically to put this back together, the complete lower frame. So I have my parts here and I will show you how to do it. 
and as you know it it's always good to relube it properly yeah so there was a ton of lube uh, previously in here I don't really think it was necessary in that amount but I will put some back okay so now let's take the parts let's put them back in so the silver part this silver part goes in like here and this one goes in like here and then uh, we can take the hammer we can place it here on this axis yeah so make sure that it goes all the way in that those parts don't block it don't interact and then we need to close it with this part of the housing you notice how the hammer is placed and how the spring here uh, is placed so when i put the hammer or the valve knocker actually um, it moves back yeah so if it falls out um, that's the way how you should have it in different versions it could be tiny bit different but generally you mount it the exact same way so then we need to put it back on the side okay so this assembly is in then we take this uh, screw with the cylindrical head and we tighten it all the way down so I have it in place so here in this hole I had this assembly and it was oriented this exact way so first this pin with this tiny end facing the spring then the spring and then this pin with the tiny pin for facing the spring obviously so I need to put all of those in first this one then the spring then this one and when all of this is in I will need to mount my levers back but uh, remember about this press safety so I put this in here first and then I put this in and it will collide with the pin here so I need to use some tool to push the pin in yeah, and then I will be able to put this lever all the way to the end yeah and it should move like this and then I when it's in the top position I can rotate this assembly take the other lever and put it on the other side all the way in again and then move both of them downwards so that they both move together so now I need to take the pistol grip and here in the pistol grip I also had the sleeve spring so um, there are probably few ways how to do it so the sleeve spring has a tab on the bottom it has to be in the groove here in the frame like this and when I have it like this I need to slide it in and here is the tricky part so um, you can see this arm from the trigger bar moves it should be over the leaf spring over the middle arm and this third arm which is here this one should slide over this uh, silver part here so I'll try to assemble it so that it is visible okay so let's add some more light so hopefully you can see ah, it's really dark in there but the spring on the right hand side here it goes over that silver part I talked about a moment ago this rod from the trigger uh, from the hammer sorry it's in the middle over the spring here and this spring is loose it will be pushing this arm back yeah so I need to keep it in place and I need to close it okay so now I need to put in this screw and secure it not too tight uh, because these threads are pretty weak and it's easy to damage them so uh, unless we are sure that we really did everything okay and the gun shoots properly uh, we should uh, be careful here yeah and then the other side obviously and the third one cuts into the plastic so I don't want to wear out the plastic part unnecessarily and for this reason I will not be putting it in yet it's not necessary for the test if everything is fine so then if it is assembled let's press in this leaf spring let's make sure here that everything is fine so you can see that uh, this arm of the spring goes over the silver part here the middle one is under the mm, hammer rod and this one is loose it will be pushing on this safety lever here so I need to put it back in so I don't know why this is sticking out like this normally it's 
uh, does not fall out. Um, probably something's missing here on the side. That's how the producer did that pistol. So I need to slide this in and here are two guides on the sides. On the other side there is the second one. They go into the pistol grip and this uh, feature that is sticking out, this, this spring support, have to match with the rod from the hammer like this. Yeah. So if I will be pushing this back in, I need to make sure it matches. Okay, and when it is in final position, make sure that this uh, safety lever here on the back, it's, uh, it has these tiny tooths on the rear under this plastic part. And I have this uh, magwell part also, so I'll put it in too. Okay, so I uh, have this on and I have to like, you know, keep this all together because uh, it's spring loaded, yeah, so it can fall apart. And then I can put in the pin here and when I push it in it will be uh, all okay to release it. So the pin is in and this complete lower assembly is done. So now we can take the top of the pistol, the slide assembly, we can put it over. Yeah, and you can see that it slid over the conversion with no issues. Then I can put in the lever here, make sure that it's aligned. And the pistol is assembled. Before we attach the hose and do some shooting, let's just quickly try that the assembly of the pistol was correct. So basically all the functionality. When you press the trigger, it should not go back unless you have safety off, right? And you push this rear lever, yeah, now it works. Pistol is can reload normally if I block the safety and push this lever I cannot shoot yeah, again without safety I cannot shoot unless I press this so it seems everything's fine and of course if I lift the lever then slide locks and if I release it it goes back pretty simple so now what uh, we are left with is the screw that we took out from the frame, piece of paracord and the hose. And now we will insert the hose into this blue connector in there and then we need to push it all the way in to make sure that it's connected and tight. When it is, uh, we can do a quick test by blowing into the hose to check for functionality of the conversion. So basically if we reload the gun uh, right now I should not be able to blow through the conversion and I am not able to. Uh, if I press the um, trigger right now when the hammer is down I should be able to blow through the conversion, probably you can hear it. And if I reload the gun again and reset the mechanism inside I should not be able to blow through the gun again. So this is fine. I will do some final shooting test later, but for now just to quickly check if everything's fine. I connect the pressure from the tank. Uh, it has to be not higher than 145 PSI. And as with all the conversions, when you connect it and the valve is depressed, the gun can shoot automatically. So make sure that the hammer is not depressed and in pistol you just need to charge it and you can put it on safe and then uh, when you will connect the pressure it should not shoot automatically yeah so I connect the pressure okay and we can listen for some leaks or something maybe we can hear something up front not in my case so just quickly a uh, few quick shots just to confirm that I can put uh, the last components in the gun And the last check with the magazine to just see quickly that the slide lock works. So in this case I can disconnect the pressure and I can do the final assembly and then I will do some more shooting. For the final assembly I need to take off the slide the same way, align the cutout here and remove the lever, slide off the slide, okay and this screw that I took out from here goes back. Now I know that uh, I don't need to remove the frame from the pistol again. I can put it back with no risk of, you know, uh, using up the whole 
uh, by refreading this multiple times. The last thing will be to attach the hose with a piece of paracord to the frame so that it's not loose. And normally I use these holes for the lanyard, but if you don't have it, then uh, you can drill some tiny holes from the rear um, to put the uh, paracord through them. So although I have this uh, kind of lanyard attachment here, anyway I will drill some holes just to show you uh, this particular way how I want to do it right now but it depends from type of the gun to other type of the gun uh, what is possible because usually it's you know tiny bit different between the models there is a ton of models I'll be right back with the holes put in place so I put in here two holes that I can put the they go at an angle so that they are not hitting the spin yeah so they are going above it uh, yeah, here they exit. I can make a loop here and basically what I need to do is to tighten it nicely so that the hose stays here in the middle and is not obscuring the mug well. So pretty quickly and what I usually do because right now the knot is in way uh, yeah so I rotate it away so that I can hide it in this area be behind the hose and I put a dot of super glue on the knot before I cut off these uh, long ends so that it does not untie itself. Yeah, so again, make it tight, move it to the side, like here, and a dot of glue. And I just need to cut off this excess that is left. Okay, and then we need to basically put everything back again, uh, make sure it's relooped and so on. Yeah, so the slide goes nicely over, let's put the lever in here, aligned, and you have the assembled high kappa on HPA. Okay, so time for some testing. I have the magazine, one of them, I have the pistol here and we are going to connect the pressure like we did just a moment ago on the desk and we will shoot some more. Quick safety manual again, uh, we need to make sure that the gun is cocked before we connect the pressure, so for this reason I will lock slide to the rear, uh, connect the pressure and again this is my favorite red line on 120 psi but you can do up to 145 and the pressure is on so uh, what is left is just to shoot. The relubing first, cleaning up, everything's done. So shooting is now the only thing. So it shoots like crazy, it's loud, strong, good kick. And then we can take the magazine, uh, again, just put it in. Right now the hose is attached uh, on the rear of the magwells, so it goes in easily, easy to insert into the magwell, so again, surprising I guess so everything's fine the next thing you would like to probably test is to just take all your magazines just put the BBs in them shoot the BBs out see if it locks on the last shot in my case it does um, I already chronoed it so this particular gun on 0.3 gram BBs uh, has 0.95 joules but it will depend from high kappa to high kappa anyway I think I said it multiple times, but many manufacturers, many different components inside, you know how it works. So uh, if you put some parts in it, if you put a longer barrel, like tight bore barrel, it will increase the power. If you put some crazy valves in it, it will increase the power. There is a ton of stuff you can do. And this is all for this episode. So we assembled the high kappa, we tested it. Um, it was much simpler than the P226. I hope uh, I made it clear how to do it. Everybody should be able to perform this kind of assembly. So thank you for your attention and keep an eye open for upcoming videos. Obviously there will be more. Subscribe, like, hit the notification bell. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I'll try to respond all to all of them. And I really appreciate your support. This is what drives this channel and makes it going. Right now I think we have 670 subscribers which for me is a lot and we are still going strong to increase these numbers so any help you can give me it will be highly appreciated so thank you and may the power of GBB pistol 
be with you.